We'll call this meeting of Lima City Council to order. We'll begin tonight's meeting with the invocation by Councillor McLean, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Heavenly Father, we're here gathered tonight to do the good works of the city. I want you to have all of us with an open mind to look at all of our communications and ordinances to make sure that we do the good works for our city. We also want to remember all of our fighters, the Army, the Navy, all of our uniformed fighters that are fighting for our, our freedom. You know, this is a time where lives do matter. It doesn't matter what color they are. It's all, they all matter. And in your name we pray, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon. Here. Mr. McLean. Here. Mr. Lowe. Here. Mr. Tebbin. Here. Ms. Adams. Here. Mr. Glenn. Here. Mrs. Miles. And Mr. Nixon. Here. Tonight we have a public hearing scheduled for the rezoning of 537 and 541 South Collins Avenue. I'll have the clerk read the call. Notice is hereby given that on September 14, 2015 at 7 p.m. in the Council Chambers, 50 Town Square, Lyme, Ohio, a public hearing will be held on the following. To modify the applicable city zoning code for two parcels located at 537 and 541 South Collins Avenue from residential class one to business class one within Lima, Allen County, Ohio. The petition is for parking expansion. Linda D. Rumbaugh, trustee, initiated this petition that the City Planning Commission endorsed. Any person desiring to be heard on said matter may do so at the time and place herein specified. The applicable reports, maps, and other documents are filed in the Council Clerk's Office and open to public inspection. Is there anybody who would wish to speak to the rezoning of the two parcels located at 537 and 541 South Collins? Please come forward, state your name and address for the record. It's, we're set up a little bit different. There is a side uh, <laughs> shelf uh, to be used. <clears throat> and I'll make that clear for anybody who is speaking at the public hearing or privilege of the floor. Uh, we do have it set up a little bit different for some of the presentations this evening. I thought you were just trying to confuse me. Uh, well, then there's that, Mr. Rodeball. <laughs> That's been tried before very successfully. Mr. President and counselors, my name is David Rodebaugh. I'm an attorney here in town. My office is located at 234 North Main Street, Lyme, Ohio. I'm here on behalf of the uh, applicant asking for the rezoning of 537 South Collins Avenue and 541 South Collins Avenue. We were before you uh, previously a couple months ago, again, um, in that same area requesting a rezoning from business one to re or residential one to business one and we're also requesting this same rezoning from business one uh, from residential one to business one the purpose of it is for uh, additional parking for uh, a veterans administration building that is currently um, in that area adjacent to those properties that is uh, properties owned by the uh, petitioner uh, Linda Rumbaugh the trustee who is here today and the, uh, the reason for that is uh, new requirements by the Veterans Administration. Um, they currently operate in a building uh, in that locale, but they're asking for additional parking areas. At this point in time, uh, until the, uh, the new arrangement is agreed to by the VA, they're gonna retain the property as residential uh, units and renting them for um, for residences. If they change it to parking, then as we've agreed with the uh, building and zoning department, there'll be uh, sufficient uh, buffers between the uh, residential area and the business area. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Is there anybody, <clears throat> excuse me, anybody else in the audience who would like to speak to the rezoning of 537 and 541 South Collins? 
ask you to please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, for the third and final call, is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak to the issue of rezoning of 537 and 541 South Collins Avenue? Seeing none, I'll declare the public hearing closed. Uh, next on the agenda is privilege of the floor. We have Anthony Scott regarding homeless advocates. Mr. Scott, if you'd come forward and state your name and address for the record, uh, my name I, will, is I will remind you that we our rules permit three minutes. Yes, sir. Um, my name is Anthony Scott, and I live at 1113 South Main. And um, I'm an advocate for the uh, homeless of Ohio. And um, I'd like to say, first of all, I'd like to say I appreciate the council for the opportunity to be heard. Uh, we believe that our cause will make a big difference in the lives and the livelihood of the community. That we have been, been poverty stricken and made us need a boost. We stand firm on this belief of helping the great citizens of this country, county, I'm sorry, that we deserve a fair chance and a better life and for them to and their families substantial life. Direct encouragement and leadership from the from one of ours and change as well as the ones who have been given been in their shoes. So to speak, the lives would be substantially motivated and changed. Most of them have no resources, knowledge of how to how this change can occur. With a bit of help and understanding to overcome poverty in which is encouraged and bring in change, we ask the council for the change to be made this to happen we what we are asking from the council is this evening is to advocacy for all in Paris, uh from our own members of the aoph which is the uh, advocacy for ohio homeless union um which be able to make a difference for them again on behalf of the aoph and its members, we are here tonight to wish to thank you for the time, consideration, for this proposal. Thank you. Can I su uh, surrender the rest of my minutes to my co-founder? I'm sorry, but your name is the only one that's on the agenda. Okay. okay. Uh, who is the other person do you want to have speak? I am Chair Jeske. Does council have any objection? Okay. No problem. Okay. What's your name and address, please? Hi, I'm Terry Janeski. My address is 1113 South Main Street, Lima. Okay. And as Anthony said, I'm his co-founder of the AOHP. And I would like to read our mission statement for you. Our mission is a as a committee of three recently impoverished and homeless people believe and advocate that the rest of the homeless population deserve at least a chance for our voices to be heard and given a chance to be able to flourish throughout our own community. We're not asking for a handout. We are asking for a hand in. There is a parcel of land located at the corners of South Main and First Streets that was owned and occupied for over 100 years by the Mrs. May Holleran Melbar family. Uh, Mrs. Holleran was from 1891 to 1966. In 1885, the sons and daughters of Mrs. Milbaugh donated the parcel of land, quote, to the poor and needy of Allen County, Ohio, end quote. This quote is engraved on the plaque that stands on the above mentioned property. We believe she had the heart of Ohio before she left this beautiful county knowing that the property may somehow make a difference in the lives of the people she witnessed in her blessed life. We believe that we are the people that, can make, that may make this difference with the approval of this council. How many of us have seen the poor, the needy, the homeless, walking the streets of Lima with no place to really go and no one to turn to for help and not a handout? The needs of the poor and deprived citizens may only be that they need some place for a hot meal or to take a shower, or they may need someone to advocate for them in seeking employment. I believe we, the members of the AOHP, can do this. We can make a difference in all of this if you, the members of, the, of this city council, will give us a chance. 
with backing and support from the City Council and donations from various resources and the drive and determination to make this mission work, we believe this can be accomplished. Help us to help each other, and by helping each other, we are also helping ourselves. Let us stand out so that others may be able to stand up. I thank you for allowing us, the members of the AOHP, the opportunity and time to bring this before you and be recognized as an organization of the people and for the people. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the consent calendar. Mr. President, Mr. Tevin. <coughs> I move uh, first that on the consent calendar that the minutes of the last council meeting be amended on page six under miscellaneous business um, in the second paragraph uh, where it states, Tevin moved seconded by Gordon to place the issue of debt or damaged trees in the right of way to the Public Works Committee. It should be not in the right of way to the Public Works Committee. Is there a second? second. A motion to second is to amend the minutes as stated by Councilor Tevin. Is there any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Mr. President, I move that item A of the consent calendar be received, filed, and approved, and item B be received and filed. Second. The motion and the second is to receive, file, and approve item A as amended. As amended. And item B, be received and filed. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion <coughs> carries. Communication number one. From the Director of Utilities regarding legislation to enter into a contract with underground utilities and construction. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that communication number one be received and filed. Second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number one. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number two. From Keith Hefner regarding legislation to allow a donation of radios to the Veterans Memorial Civic and Convention Center. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I move that communication number two be received and filed and legislation is on tonight's agenda. Second. second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number two. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Communication number three. From the Director of Community Development regarding <coughs> legislation to place tax assessments. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move that communication number three receive and file legislation on the night agenda. Second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number three. <coughs> is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Communication number four. From the Deputy Director of Utilities regarding legislation to enter into an agreement with utility metering solutions. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that communication number four be received and filed. Second. second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number four. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <laughs> Okay. Motion carries. Communication number five. From the Director of Public Works regarding legislation to submit applications for State Issue 1 funds. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that communication number five be received and filed, and legislation is on tonight's agenda. Second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number five. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number six. From the city engineer regarding legislation to enter into a contract with Smith Bowen. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that communication number six be received and filed. Legislation is on tonight's agenda. Second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number six. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Communication number seven. From the city engineer regarding legislation to enter into a contract with VTF excavation. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that communication number seven be received and filed, and legislation is on tonight's agenda. Second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number seven. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. 
Communication number eight. From the Deputy Law Director requesting legislation to amend section 202.09. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. I move that communication number eight be received and filed. Legislation is on tonight's agenda. Second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number eight. <coughs> is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those aye. opposed? The motion carries. Communication number nine. From the finance director regarding legislation for budget amendments. Mr. President. <coughs> Mr. Tevin. I move that communication number nine be received and filed. Legislation is on tonight's agenda. Second. second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number nine. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Communication number 10. From the Director of Utilities regarding additional water and sewer appropriations. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move the communication number 10 be received and filed. Second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number 10. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number 11. From Chief Hefner regarding legislation to enter into a contract with statewide Ford Lincoln. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I move that communication number 11 be received and filed and legislation is on tonight's agenda. Second. second. The motion the second is to receive and file communication number 11. Is there any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Communication number 12. From the Director of Utilities requesting legislation to enter into a joint contract with the Allen Water District and Chem Trade Logistics. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that communication number 12 be received and filed and the law director be authorized to prepare any necessary legislation. Second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number 12 and to authorize the law director to prepare the necessary legislation. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Uh, next on the agenda, reports of officials, Lieutenant Andy Green regarding the next neighborhood policing substation. Good evening, members of council, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I was asked to come forward to give you an update on our community-oriented policing program. Uh, where we're at with it right now. We currently have one substation that opened on the second of this month and that is on the east side of town. It is in the New Life Assembly Church, 1003 East Kibbe. Officer Aaron Rohde has been assigned to that substation. Uh, it opened on the second, however, he was on vacation. He is now back. He started his first day of work out of the substation today. So he is excited getting um, out, meeting people in the neighborhoods, starting some surveys in the neighborhood to try and determine what some of the problems are to be able to address those concerns. We have two additional substations that will be opening uh, at a date to be determined still. There is going to be one that is going to open in the United Way building on South Collett Street. And there's going to be one that's going to open in St. Mark's United Methodist Church at the corner of Murphy and Metcalf. Those will be staffed by Officer uh, Wireman, Justin Wireman, and Officer Eric Miracle, respectively. We don't have a date that we're going to start with those yet. Uh, are there any questions? Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. Lieutenant Green, you going to give us quarterly update, or are you going to how you gonna, how you gonna come back and let us know what's going on? I can do that however you want us to do that. If you huh. would like quarterly updates, I'm, I'm willing to do that. I don't know. You can talk to the city council about just yeah. if it's exciting when you come in, let us know what's going on, so we can just like you're doing surveys and different things like that. Just keeping yeah, everything it, upbeat yeah, so you can know what's going on. It's gonna be. Uh, they're gonna have to get their feet wet a little bit, so they're gonna have to determine what the problems in each of the specific neighborhoods mm -hmm. are first, <clears throat> so they can figure out how they need to address those. But it's gonna start with crime surveys, mm -hmm. uh, a simple three question survey in, in each neighborhood. They're going door to door, talking to people, finding out what problems are and how we can help to address them. Thank you, Lieutenant. Thank you, any other questions? Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I just wanna say I appreciate the work that you and everybody else putting into this 
and uh, it means a lot to everybody in the city. So I just wanted to thank you personally. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. It, well, and we're very thankful for uh, City Council allowing us to have the availability of funding to be able to pursue this program. So it's good for the city all the way around. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Next is Jeff Sprague and Doug Arthur regarding Link, Ohio. I'm sorry, Link, Lima, Ohio. <laughs> thank you, sir. Good evening. Jeff Sprague with the Allen Economic Development Group. Uh, Doug Arthur um, is handing some stuff out. Doug was actually introduced to us uh, by the mayor. Uh, probably about 10 months ago on some work that Doug was doing in other communities as it relates to workforce and economic development and um, we uh, established a relationship with Doug and, and it's really started to snowball and, and show some great results and and the, um, the mayor read our uh, report year-end report that we submitted to the state of Ohio and recommended that we present the, the same information to council tonight so on behalf of the uh, folks in the in the audience I'll also have uh, copies of, if you want to take a look at this or pass along after that. I will be clean your copy. All right, so we're here to talk about um, an initiative that we're calling um, Link Lime Allen County. And we also have a few other uh, logos up there. But just to give you a little bit of a background, um, if you look at the Allen Economic Development Group, um, when I came on board, we, we put together a strategic plan and built within that strategic plan were three goal areas. And, and the first one is working with our existing businesses to do business re retention and expansion opportunities and then looking at attraction opportunities to bring new companies into Lyman Allen County to, to grow our economy. Uh, the second phase of our strategic plan was really looking at the overall infrastructure. And you mentioned uh, the Kim Trade project uh, tonight. Uh, that's a project that we've been working on with the city to, to extend the water line up to uh, Kim, Kim Trade and Eagle Rail Car for uh, some opportunities up there. And then the third component of our strategic plan is, is workforce. And really that came about because as we went out and visited companies, uh, talk to the presidents, the CEOs, the plant managers. Uh, probably the number one issue that came to light was the fact that there are jobs in Allen County that are basically going unfilled and there's opportunities for additional growth in Allen County if we could find the right people to fill those jobs. So through the course of uh, really building our strategic plan and the introduction that the, the mayor gave us uh, with Doug Arthur, uh, allowed us to really pursue this and, and make it a vital part of our uh, strategic plan. So one of the first things that started to materialize, the state of Ohio through Governor's, Governor Kasich's um, leadership created the Office of Workforce Transformation. Uh, Ohio also recognized that we were lagging uh, just in terms of what employers were expecting from a workforce and, and what Ohio was able to fill uh, from a statewide uh, perspective. So what the, what the state provided was an opportunity to become one of six pilot projects in, in the state. We applied for that opportunity and the Allen Economic Development Group was actually selected as one of the six pilots in the state of Ohio to really address the issue of workforce development. Um, <coughs> they divided that up by the Jobs Ohio regions so our, our pilot project actually represents all of Northwest Ohio. So phase one started last year um, in October. Phase two started as of July 1st. And, and really, if you look at phase one, we, we built the framework around what we're executing off of in, in phase two. The, the whole premise behind it, and, and I gave you, we, we actually handed out a couple things. One is just a, a, the overall snapshot of, of the project. But uh, the second thing that we gave you was this, this park pocket card here, um, which really emphasizes what it's all about. And, and that's the fact that the Link Lima initiative is, is about connecting, growing, and, and th making our community thrive as it relates to, to workforce development and economic development. 
on the back side of that card, you'll see that our initiative is really focused on being employer driven. I mean, it's all about listening to our employers in our community and, and responding to what their needs are as it relates to, the, to their workforce. And then we've all obviously identified some barriers that, that come into play as, as we link employees up with employers. And uh, Doug will give you a little bit more detail on actually how we're addressing some of those, those barriers. But um, you know, number one, the, uh, the initiative is employer driven built around what the what the employers in Allen County really need from that workforce perspective. Number two is it's it's linked in with the governor's initiative to roll out Ohio what what he's calling Ohio means jobs. They created a, a workforce portal where they really encouraged Ohio companies to go out and post their job openings. Uh, they've really encouraged uh, citizens to go out and post their resumes with the hope that there would be a marriage between the two. Uh, over the course of time, I think what they realized was if they're marketing this from a statewide perspective, it's, it's not really getting any traction at the local level. So through the course of our pilot project, we've really made an emphasis to use Ohio Means Jobs as that workforce portal. And on the second page of the information that I handed out is the, it, are some of the outcomes that have occurred uh, just recently through this initiative. We now have over 145 companies in the greater Allen County area using Ohio Means Jobs as their workforce portal to uh, post their jobs and actually look for job candidates out there on, on the website. So uh, you know, we've, we've gained a great deal of traction in a relatively short period of time utilizing the, the tools that um, the state has put together. Uh, the third component is really helping employers better match the supply and demand. Uh, and if you look on the third page of the handout that I gave you, uh, one of the things that we looked at were the in-demand in jobs that are available in Allen County uh, and really what the structure of those in-demand jobs are. And again, this, this relates right back to our economic development strategy. As we're out talking to companies, looking for expansion opportunities, you know, they're really providing us a list of, of uh, positions that that they want to grow in the areas of, of that growth that could take place. So we're matching it up with, uh, with the, the demands of, of our local community. And then uh, the fourth piece of it is really to provide the job readiness uh, and, and soft skill component that employers are looking for. One of the first things that we did was convene uh, a, a group of businesses, uh, ask them what, what are you expecting from a workforce or a candidate that's coming into your facility to apply for a job, they pretty much defined what those what that criteria looks like, and then we really went back and, and built uh, some of the criteria or some of the components of, of Link Lime and Link Lime Allen County around those those specific areas that uh, companies were talking about. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Doug. He's going to talk uh, really about items two and three, and then I'll wrap it up with, with item four as it relates to the material that we're handing out tonight. Thanks. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, good evening. I was invited initially uh, by Mayor Berger to come and present some of the projects I've been working on for the last decade to a group of business leaders and community leaders in Lima to see if there was a, uh, if the temperature of the organism was right to try some innovative, uh, creative stuff that would sort of spike the, spike the initiatives here in Lima. And the answer was a resounding yes. So we started about 10 months ago beginning a process that was um, geared specifically to up that ante and improve the response in the, uh, in the workforce in Lima. And the idea, as, as Jeff pointed out, that I, I, think you, uh, I think you should have heard popping through is um, unemployment is not a job shortage, it's a skills shortage. There are plenty of jobs. The problem is finding the right people with the right skills to match those jobs. And so the challenge that we took on was zeroing in on manufacturing, which is the sweet spot for uh, the Allen County ecosystem with wonderful, wonderful opportunities that are at, at national levels with some of the folks that have 
made their homes here like Ford and Procter and Gamble and Husky and Potash. This is this is something that can compete with any ecosystem anywhere in the country or even in the world in, in a lot of cases. We said let's take that sweet spot and figure out how to make it better. So um, I was uh, graciously invited to be the keynote speaker at this past January's chamber breakfast and share the story of what I had encountered in some other cities like Fort Wayne and Cleveland and Cincinnati and San Diego that might be able to be replicated here. And I, I, I did an a interesting little twist on a survey and asked a crowd of 450 people to identify the top 10 things that were wrong with Allen County's workforce. If they had to fix things, what would their top 10 <coughs> ranking be? Or more importantly, what were the top three or four? And in the process, as you, as you can see on the sheet, we got some surprises. The biggest problem, and, and I'm sure none of this is news to any of you, but it was an important mandate for all of us on how to prioritize our time. The number one concern about workforce in Allen County <coughs> and in Lima specifically is the perception that this is not a good place to have a job and to raise a family and start a career and build a business. The perception is not necessarily from the people inside Lima Allen County, it's from the people outside looking in. And it causes a significant negative impact when a company tries to import uh, and recruit and bring people in and just for example, the spouse says, you, you want us to move where? I, I don't think so. This is not um, a place that sits on the top of the, of the livability list, even though it should. So the first problem, overwhelmingly uh, rated by the business community at this chamber gathering of almost 500 people was you got to fix the perception that Lima is not a great place to uh, have a business and to raise a family and to build a career. Number two, um, the the group of businesses said way too many people are presenting barriers, barriers to employment. And those barriers are not minor. We're talking about drug substance abuse, talking about uh, not having stable child care or stable transportation, or not having a GED or a high school diploma if that's required, mental health issues, housing issues. All of those issues equal barriers to employment. That, and, and I don't mean to uh, imply this in any kind of negative way, but the bottom line is the employer, is, it's not their problem. They've got a job to fill, they've got a business to run, and if you're not ready to come to them without those barriers, you're really not employment ready. That was the second highest ranked problem with the workforce according to the business community. The third was soft skills, work ethic. The story that we hear over and over as we talk to businesses please just give me somebody who will pass the drug test and will show up for work. Um, that's pretty, it's a pretty sad indictment, but when it gets to that level, it's, it's a story that we need to address because the answer from the business community is you need to fix that so that we can hire our local staff. And the fourth thing was we don't have the right talent with the right skills. So we set out on a mission to fix and improve those four things. And what we're doing to fix them is, I'm happy to report, 10 months in, it's showing all of signs, all the signs that it's working. The first is building a new sense of community pride, a new sense of um, Allen County and Lima being the place to be. And if you're here, you have home field advantage here. You have opportunities here you would only get because you're part of the Lima Allen County community. That kind of pride is causing us to take very specific actions, starting with a two-day expo celebrating the excellence that is the Maker community in Lima Allen County called MakerFest 2015. So for the first time, we're bringing together the students, the employers, the colleges, uh, the uh, teachers, the educators, all to celebrate the excellence of the Maker community here including manufacturing and the skilled trades and robotics and engineering. We're pretty much taking over the Civic Center. We're closing Main Street. We're bringing in two 40-foot trailers with demos of advanced manufacturing automation. We're going to have the professionals compete 
Well, the kids watch, so we're going to be shooting to figure out who is the best welder in Allen County. And we're not talking about kids. We're going to let the, the uh, folks who make their living doing that kind of stuff become rock stars for a day and get a little bit of attention that they don't normally get. So uh, Make, MakerFest uh, 2015 is the beginning of a journey to change the opinion. We want the hoping 500 plus people each day that show up at MakerFest to come away saying, now that is Lima Allen County. Now that's a good time. That was my hometown that did that. That kind of event done repeatedly changes the talk, changes the message, changes the image and has people all of a sudden able to point to some things new, fresh, and exciting that make them proud to be part of the community. We, uh, we have found a way to deal with these barriers in a very uh, obvious way, you would think. The real bottom line with the barriers is when someone has a barrier to employment, whether it's drug, a substance abuse issue, or a child care issue, or a transportation issue, we do not want to put them in front of an employer for an interview. We only know it's going to go south. And when it goes south, the employer's not going to be happy, the employee's going to be dejected, and what we needed to do was instead identify those barriers up front and get those people the help they need. So we assembled the experts in each of the barriers, mental health, housing, child care, transportation, um, um, uh, the legal aid folks with criminal records for the folks who come in with a criminal justice background that has problems, or substance abuse with the folks from Coleman and Choice Behavioral Care who can help these folks. And when we, in, when we encounter the barrier right on day one, if they have a barrier, we go get them help. It's not that they're out of the process, they're temporarily, let's go get you fixed so you can come back and be employer ready. It's working. In the first month, and, and I, I don't know how much you're aware of the numbers, but the amount of, the number of people who fail a drug screen is, is embarrassing these days. It's, it's embarrassingly high. Uh, 60, 70% uh, fail the drug test. When we did our first month, 40 drug screens, 39 passed the drug test. And one didn't because of prescription drugs that they were on. There was a whole group of people who didn't take the drug test because they knew they weren't going to pass. Well, that's exactly what we want. Let's go get you some help. Get you out of line and go get you the substance abuse help or the criminal background check help. Uh, John Keenahan up at Legal Aid um, jumps in as soon as we say we got somebody with a, with a felony in their record to figure out if they can help them to get it expunged. We connect them with OpenGate, with Sandy Monfort, and get them a, a connection with a second chance employer. But the point is, the barriers <coughs> are being addressed before we put them in front of Potash or Husky or Procter & Gamble or Lima Pallet. Be, not as part of their interview. Let's go take care of that stuff before. And it's working. And the, uh, the response from the employers is strong, and the response from the candidates is appropriate and strong. Um, when they say the soft skills are, are missing, the work ethic, we created, as part of the process, a job survival skills workshop, how to survive your job the first 30 days. And we were, uh, we were able to identify a new uh, um, assessment tool called the Acumax Index that in 10 minutes uh, gives the data that will tell you how a person is wired, how they'll react under stress, how they'll deal with other people. So we put the person through a job survival skills workshop, read uh, read through with them how to interpret their Acumax index and add to it strategies on how to survive the job uh, uh, scene. Uh, you probably know this well, but the, f the problem is not as tough to place them in a job as to get them to stay in the job. Retention is a huge problem. We're addressing that with a lot of success with Acumax. And we got the founder and owners of the Acumax index to be willing to come down to MakerFest and set up a workshop, and anybody that wants to go through and be evaluated, they're going to do that on, on their nickel for her, uh, just to spread the word that this is a good assessment tool. The final thing is we don't have the right talent with the right skills. We went to our friends at Apollo and our friends at Wright State and said, you've got a 40-hour training certification that seems very useful, but it's during the middle of the day. Can you develop something that's a little bit more 
time friendly, like let it be computer based so the person can do it after hours. And instead of it being one size fits all, can it be customized for the employer? And our friends at Apollo and our friends at Rhodes created a whole series of new courses that the employers can have funded by the uh, uh, on the job training program so they get reimbursed for it. But it's from the employer's request. Make it so that it doesn't invade the workday, make it so that it's customizable. So, end of the story, long, long story, uh, but uh, important for you to hear. This is very specific do, not talk about, let's do. We're doing things that are innovative, they're outside the normal processes, and the folks in Columbus have said, check out what's going on in Allen County. Check out what's going on in Lima. This is not your normal stuff, and it looks like it may be a model that others should follow. So that's where we are 10 months in, and um, I'm hoping that as we come back and report to you in a year, we'll have that many more success stories to report. Back to you, sir. Thank you. And in closing, I think it's really about the bottom line. If you look at um, Allen County, 1980, we had 112,000 people living in, in Allen County. You know, we're about 105,000 now. It's really about that uh, employer pie. You know, we, we can't grow our economy by just dividing that, that pie up into smaller and smaller increments. We really need to look for a way to expand that pie, grow our economy. You know, we're really blessed in, in Allen County and in, in Lima to have a number of great manufacturing companies that really are the catalyst and the driver behind our economic development effort. And then we have a lot of great support services, the hospitals and, and our educational providers, you know, retail, but they're, they're really uh, reliant on manufacturing and our manufacturing base and the growth that's related to that. So as Doug said, you, you know, we're really looking at the existing, the existing workforce. How do we make sure that they're aligned with what our employers need? And then also, you know, we've got a great deal of talent that's coming up through our K through 12 systems. And we really need to make sure that they're aware of career opportunities that exist in Allen County so that they stay here, uh, they buy a home, uh, they, they, they build their family here to really grow Lyme Allen County and, and make it a long-term part of their uh, overall lifelong learning and, and careers in, in the community. So really, pre really appreciate the opportunity to bring you up to date on what we're doing from an econ economic development standpoint. Uh, mark on your calendar uh, those two dates in November because, like Doug said, you know, really that's the time we want to pull back the curtains, uh, show the community what we make in Allen County, how it's made, what type of career, the career opportunities there are for you in, in Allen County, and to really provide a, a good mechanism to showcase what we're all about and the fact that we really are real American strength. Thank you. Jeff, what are those dates? Is it November 20th and 21st? That's correct. Okay. Friday and Saturday. That's the weekend before Thanksgiving. And, and we realize there might be a football game that, that Saturday, so we're going to make accommodations for that. Yes. Mr. President. Mr. Law. Yes, Jeff, is there a direct telephone number? Anyone want to sit down and speak with you first? Sure, uh, you can just call our office, 419-222-7706. Uh, 222-7706. And in our phone tree, I think it's the third or fourth, that there's a uh, message here right for Link Lime Allen County. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President. I'm sorry, Mr. Yeah. Glenn? Yes, I was just yes. going to commend you guys on this because this, this is great that we are working on this problem and this barrel we need to get and I'm glad we identified it now because we got we got a lot of folks who want to get to work and we can get them taken care of before they get to the job sites <coughs> say the mental issues or the drug problem or resume writing what we need to do we are we chopping on ahead of time and that's how we're going to grow our county you're absolutely right that's how we're going to continue growing and building our country our, our county up by identifying these problems right away before him or her get out there. And that's great and excited about this. Board. I know it can move. Yeah, one of, one of the things that we realized early on, uh, the community has a, a number of great assets and right. a number of great uh, community-based organizations and, and partners. And, and this is really about aligning those partners so that we're all, we're all going in the same direction and, and that direction leads to jobs. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much.
Appreciate it. Thank you. Next, reports of committees. Uh, the Council of the Whole Committee meeting. Lima City Council met as a committee of the whole on August 31st, uh, 2015. The purpose of the meeting was to discuss uh, questions and concerns regarding the volunteers in front of the federal building. I have submitted that committee report in writing. I would move that the committee report be received, filed, and approved. Second. Motion the second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. <coughs> Ordinance 17015. Uh, this is a second reading authorizing the mayor to enter into a lease agreement with Lyman Memorial Health Systems. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that Ordinance 170-15 be passed on second reading. Second. second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 170-15 on its second reading. Is there any discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. McLean. Yes. Mr. Lowe. No. Mr. Tevin. Yes. Ms. Adams. Yes. Mr. Glenn. <coughs> yes. Mrs. Miles. Mr. Nixon? Yes. And Mr. Gordon? Yes. Ordinance 17015 has been passed on its second reading by a 6 to 1 vote. Ordinance 17615. Levying special assessments for property maintenance code charges on premises in the city of Lyme, Ohio. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move that Ordinance 17615 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is that Ordinance 17615 be passed on its first reading. Is there any discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Ordinance 17615 has been passed on its first reading by a 7 to 0 vote. Ordinance 17715. Amending the 2015 annual budget. <coughs> Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. I move that Ordinance 17715 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 17715 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. McLean. Yes. Mr. Lowe. Yes. Mr. Tevin. Yes. Ms. Adams. Yes. Mr. Glenn. <coughs> yes. Mrs. Miles. Mr. Nixon. Yes. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Ordinance 17715 has been passed on its first reading by a 7 to 0 vote. Ordinance 17815. Authorizing the mayor to accept a donation from the Lima Central High School class of 1950. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. I move that Ordinance 17815 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion, the second, is to pass Ordinance 17815 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. McLean. Yes. Mr. Lowe. Yes. Mr. Tebbin. Yes. Ms. Adams. Yes. Mr. Glenn. Yes. Mrs. Miles. Mr. Nixon. Yes. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Ordinance 17815 has been passed on its first reading by a 7 to 0 vote. Ordinance 17915. Authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with the VTF excavation for construction of the Kibbe Street Bridge replacement project. Mr. President. Ms. Adams? I move that Ordinance 179-15 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 179-15 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Ms. <coughs> Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tepin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Ordinance 179-15 has been passed on its first reading by a 7-0 vote. Ordinance 18015. Authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Smith Bowen. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that Ordinance 180 15 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 180 15 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. McLean. Yes. Mr. Lowe. Yes. Mr. Tevin. Yes. Ms. Adams. Yes. Mr. Glenn. Yes. Mrs. Miles. Mr. Nixon. Yes. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Ordinance 18015 has been passed on its first reading by a 7 to 0 vote. Ordinance 18115. Authorizing the mayor to submit <laughs> applications to the Ohio Public Works Commission requesting state issue 1 funds. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that Ordinance 181 15 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 18115 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I'd like to ask Mr. Elstrow if he could 
state the four uh, issues that are submittals, applications that are being submitted uh, for the general public and uh, one of interest uh, I think some counselors will have is the Elm Street Central Avenue. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Mr. President, um, the four applications which we plan to submit to the Ohio Public Works Commission uh, infrastructure funds, also known as state issue two funds or state issue one funds, um, are first of all our various resurfacing program which we submit uh, every year. Second is a project which will be known as Jackson and Finley Road intersection realignment. Uh, those familiar with that curve know that it's very tight. Um, there is a guardrail there that we have to replace nearly every year and we have a design which will modify that curvature of that road and uh, would be a safety improvement. Secondly, we are uh, competing for funds for Elm and Central intersection improvement that consists of uh, a signal, signal to be installed there which was a recommendation of the uh, traffic commission several months ago contingent upon us uh, finding funds to uh, install it. And finally, we will be submitting the Allen, Lima, Wayne and High Street project. Uh, that is a, a $2.7 million project. Uh, that is, if you recall, um, changing Wayne Street from one way to two way and also making improvements on High Street uh, from Medcalf to Central uh, with both in uh, safety and pedestrian and bicycle improvements along that route, much like we did with uh, West Street and Elizabeth Street last year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Lowe? Uh, these requests, are they in the order on the, on the paperwork that we received? Is that in the order that they would be taken care of, or is that the is that priorities the way you have it listed? Mr. President. Mr. Alstro. Um, state issue one funds are competitive. We will be competing with various political subdivisions um, in a eight county district. So these are ranked and scored based on the merit of uh, the applications, such things as our um, local match or, or the degree or the percentage of the local match is taken in consideration, uh, the longevity of, these, uh, of the improvements, uh, the benefits of the improvements. There's a, quite an extensive uh, criteria of which these are scored. So. Um, in a nutshell, yes, our resurfacing is our highest priority because we have no other source of funds for resurfacing. Um, other than that, um, um, Mr. locally, we, we, we don't have uh, much of a, a uh, local priority for the other three, except that I can tell you the High Street, uh, Wayne Street, though it's important, it's probably an awfully large project and we have to be very, very lucky to uh, have that one funded. Okay, the, the reason I asked, um, I know when we were speaking about the uh, housing facility on Elm Street and Central, uh, one of my biggest things was I agreed to uh, was if they put a light there, that I would agree to that, that place going there. And it is, there's some blind spots and I've actually had, a, I've probably only had two phone calls on uh, <laughs> that corner. Uh, it, it, there's been many, many wrecks there. I guess um, my question, I don't know if you know off the top of your head, what would that cost us for, for a light there in, that, in that, that block? I know it was approved. I just, I just don't know how much that, that would cost for a street light to be placed there. Someplace around uh, 150 to 180,000. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? <clears throat> yes. Mrs. Miles? Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Ordinance 18115 has been passed by a 7 to 0 vote. Ordinance 18215. Authorizing the mayor to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for the hauling and disposal of lime sludge from the city's lime sludge lagoons. Mr. President? Mr. McLean? I move that ordinance. 18215 be passed on his first reading. 
Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 182.15 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? <coughs> yes. Mrs. Miles? Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Ordinance 182.15 has been passed on its first <coughs> reading by a 7-0 to zero vote. Ordinance 183.15. Authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with utility metering solutions. Mr. President? Mr. McLean? I move that Ordinance 183.15 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 183.15 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Ordinance 183.15 has been passed on its first reading by a 7-0 to zero vote. Ordinance 184.15. Authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with underground utilities and construction. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that Ordinance 184.15 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 184.15 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. McLean. Yes. Mr. Lowe. Yes. Mr. Tebbin. Yes. Ms. Adams. Yes. Mr. Glenn. Yes. Mrs. Miles. <coughs> Mr. Nixon. Yes. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Ordinance 184.15 has been passed on its first reading by a 7-0 to zero vote. Ordinance 185.15. Authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with statewide Ford Lincoln for the purchase of a 2016 Ford Fusion. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I move that Ordinance 185.15 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 185.15 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Ordinance 185.15 has been passed on its first reading by a 7-0 to zero vote. <coughs> Ordinance 186.15. Authorizing the mayor to make a donation to the Veterans Memorial Civic and Convention Center. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon? I move that Ordinance 186.15 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 186.15 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Ordinance 186.15 has been passed on its first reading by a 7-0 to zero vote. Ordinance 187.15. Amending Section 202.09 of the Codified Ordinances of Lima, Ohio, concerning cost of copies to the general public. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. I move that Ordinance 187.15 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 187.15 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Ms. Adams. Yes, uh, if I could, I'd like to ask um, Deputy Director of our Law Department, uh, Mr. Payne. In the communication and now also in the ordinance, it says here, um, co codified ordinance are now available online to the American Legal Publishing Corporation. And I was wondering if there's a web address. Uh, yes, Councillor Adams. Uh, actually, the easiest way for the public to get to the version of the code in our charter is there's a link provided under departments under the law director. There's also a link under council's main web page. Great. That's a direct link right to it. So Great. that's the easiest way for people to get to the copies right. of the code and the charter. And then you just follow steps once you get to there? Uh, actually, I believe those links are direct links uh, that will take you directly to the Lima Lima's section? code. Yeah. Wonderful. So that, those should that's be great. direct links. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Is there any further discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. <coughs> Mrs. Miles? Mr. Nixon? Yes. And Mr. Gordon? Yes. Ordinance 187.15 has been passed on its first reading by a 7-0 to zero vote. Ordinance 188.15. Amending the city zoning code from residential one to class one business for two parcels located at 537 and 541 South Collins Avenue in the city of Lima is herein described. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that Ordinance 188-15 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 188-15 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? 
Mr. President. Ms. Adams. Uh, this location is in the Fifth Ward. Uh, it's a great service. I uh, hope this meets with the uh, federal VA and allows this function to stay in Lima as there is quite a need. Um, it's good that, you know, people are using it and that we have a need to grow and provide the parking. And uh, I sat in on those meetings, uh, the Planning Commission, and uh, uh, it'll be a great asset, not only to the Fifth Ward, but also to Lima. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Is there any further discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. McLean? <coughs> yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Chapin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Mr. Nixon? Yes. And Mr. Gordon? Yes. Ordinance 188.15 has been passed on its first reading by a 7 to 0 vote. Uh, moving on to miscellaneous business, Mr. McLean. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I think everybody made it through Labor Day okay. Uh, if you missed the park and the fireworks, you missed one of the best shows that we've seen around. Um, I happened to take uh, some kids down into the uh, blow up balloon things, and I'm telling you, I uh, wore me out. So, you know, by, by the fireworks time, I was ready to be at home relaxing, but it was a very, very good show. And I, and, you know, I, I've heard, heard it uh, many times that they want the Fourth of July to be celebrated on Labor Day. And uh, Rick Stolley says, no, no, no. <laughs> so uh, everybody did have a good time, though, Rick. I tell you, uh, it was impressive, and I, I'm, I'm glad it happened that way this year. OK? Um, that's about all I have, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McLean. Mr. Lowe? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Um, this past week, I, I got to look at one of our city workers doing an excellent job and it wasn't during work hours it was off hours and that's Mr. Saul Allen and I just want to thank him even though he's not here tonight he puts in a lot of lot of time at Lama Senior High with the sporting events and, and refing and helping with uh, the young ladies volleyball league and, and, and different things within the school and I just want to thank him and, and, and when I seen him over there I had mentioned some city lights that I had seen out. And um, he said, oh, okay, I'm on it, and I got it. He asked me where it was at, and I told him. And two, later, two days later, I just happened to be in the same area, mm -hmm. and all three were taken care of. And, and he was on his job, and I just, I just want to give credit where credit is due, and I just thank him for handling that. Um, on September the 24th at 6 p.m. here in city chambers, there's gonna be a land bank uh, Meeting here is a program. The program will be explained to the public. Um, this program will only work for those that are eligible. And the only way that you're going to find out if you're eligible is to come to the meeting. Uh, it's going to be 6 o'clock. I've placed it out on Facebook. I've had a lot of people inbox me and, and ask me, you know, some details. But I'm trying to uh, create an atmosphere of nosiness. I'm trying to get them to come out. Uh, administration has taken steps uh, to get the word out. People just aren't taking advantage of it. Um, so I ask if we have it in the evening time. Uh, some of the meetings were taking place during during the day. Um, but I, I pray that people take advantage of it. Again, it's September the 24th, 2015 at 6 p.m. right here in these chambers. Uh, that is a Thursday uh, evening. Uh, there was two things that I heard tonight that really bothered me um, said nine million dollars is spent on housing support in Allen County that's a that's a lot of money and then we had individuals who stood up this evening who spoke on a need for uh, homeless uh, when I worked downtown when my business was downtown uh, I had the opportunity sometimes between breaks to speak with the individuals that were sleeping on the bench or just casually walking around during the day. And you would be surprised. Uh, I prejudged a lot of people, uh, the knowledge that they had, or they just got into bad situations, or some experienced death in their families. Uh, some had drug addictions. Some had children that didn't want anything to do with them. And they had just been going through a whole lot 
and, and they kind of lost their way. But when you talk to them, they had a very, very good heart. And, and they were just looking for a chance to improve, and they had, they had nowhere to go. And I, I hope that some way, somehow, I would like to see a business plan from the individuals that came today uh, that we can work with them in some kind of way, shape, form, manner. Uh, maybe to put their, their paperwork in line and, and, and house. If it isn't nothing but somewhere where they can lay their head in the evening. Uh, there's many, many mornings when I came to work with, with a coat on and scarf on and hat on and <clears throat> carrying things into work. And these individuals was outside with a sleeping bag and no coat. And it was extremely cold. So I just just really think about that. Uh, everybody played their part. Uh, but with these individuals, if that property was truly uh, there to help those that were less fortunate, um, I would like to see something happen and, and support them in any way we can. I don't know the logistics behind it. Uh, but uh, if there's anything that I can do, I, I am going to make myself ready and available for them. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Lowe. Mr. Tevin? Just one item. Uh, Lieutenant Green's report on the, the future substations for community-oriented policing and the first one that opened, uh, I was able to attend that along with uh, Ms. Adams and uh, Miles. Yeah, and Miles was there. Uh, and that is a wonderful setting at the corner of Kibbe and Calumet. And I've talked to some, some people who live in that neighborhood, and they're, they're very excited about it. And, I, you know, if we end up with five or six substations, this is going to be a game changer for our community. And it's, it's really going to uh, be something that I think we as council, when we look back, I brought it to council in, in January, and council fully supported it, and I think it's one of the best decisions uh, that we've made. We, we, we put our money where our mouth is, and, and uh, it was $224,000, I think, this year. Uh, and I think that it is going to make a long-term difference in our community. So I thank the, the police department for the time and effort that you guys have put into organizing and implementing and executing, and I think that the results are going to be tremendous. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tevin. Ms. Adams. Thank you, Mr. President. A uh, few things uh, this evening. Um, I would like to personally acknowledge and thank Councillor Glenn for the uh, Elm Street Central, as he referred to, referred to referred it to the Traffic Commission. And uh, yes, they did. Uh, they did a study and they approved. Uh, that it needs the light and uh, this funding, hopefully, uh, we, we will get from the state one uh, funding uh, will help see that happen. Great. Um, I know there's been some talk from other counselors concerning school starting and driving more carefully. Uh, I've had some calls from <laughs> residents saying we need to get these kids back on the sidewalk. Yep. There's too much walking in the street and uh, the drivers are being careful, but the students uh, need to get back on the street. Now, some of them are adults as well. Mm -hmm. I've actually seen some pushing baby carriages mm -hmm. in the street, and I can't believe when I see it. Um, and this is at night as well, <clears throat> in the dark. And I just shake my head. I can't believe what I'm witnessing. Mm -hmm. So please... Um, uh, Put that on your uh, LPD and Major Baker's here tonight representing the Lima Police. Um, put that on the patrols list to get these young people, students, back on the sidewalk. Um, and finally tonight, I'd like to approve um, the absence and pay of Councilor Miles. Second. Second. Motion and second is to approve the absence and salary of Councilor Miles. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Mr. Glenn. Well, I have some good news there. Thanks, Ms. Adams. I've been with my father most of the time there with him, being sick. But uh, that's some great news. And I'm going to echo a little bit with Ms. Adams. We got a lot of calls on about kids out on the streets. 
you know, they pushing their baby carriage down <coughs> and, and walking out to school. And a lot of people are stopping by the house saying, Mr. Bland, when the kids get hit, it'll be my fault. There's a sidewalk. There are brand new sidewalks there. Why are they not walking the sidewalk? And no excuse. They're not new. Back in the past, we was writing tickets on them. Then a lot of parents come complaining. They, they gave my son a ticket, my daughter a ticket. So we need to get an opportunity, and we're going to talk to the school about it tomorrow because I've been getting a lot of calls this past weekend. It been This <coughs> past week it's been really terrible. They don't walk in the street. Also, and I'm echoing a little bit what Jesse has, Mr. Poe has said about the homeless people. I had an opportunity to stay in the shelter, which I do that once a year. Last year was my first year I missed. And the main thing, I'd be there to ask them what they need. How could I help you get on Social Security or do, how could I help you while I'm laying there sleeping? And they're talking to them. And a couple guys, about five or six guys telling me, I get a check every month, I get $1,200 a month. Why are you here? Why are you here? And these are some of the things that we, they call, the guys brought up mental health issues. Some of them are veterans, and some of them have been on drugs, some of them retired, getting good checks every month, but they don't know what direction to go to because they need help. And that's what's going to help our city out, what the guys were talking about tonight. We've got to step up in them directions. Sure, our young people that move in here are going to want to stay in line with that. We are doing something about these problems, and that's what we get to start doing. And um, some of the things that we, we can bring housing, we, we, and I understand what he said, we don't want no handouts, which that's good because they can work on getting themselves a job, get them going, going to uh, Ms. Moffitt, trying to find a job. Then there's some of the things we do. They don't have to walk around all day long. If they got some kind of skill, find out what they got. And what can we do to help them? If they got a problem with drugs, we work with them with drugs. And I know Mr. Casey had talked about that uh, a couple months ago, how he want to work on, on these things, right? getting these people back to work again, you know, working on their criminal charges and stuff like that, trying to work on finding ways, get someone there to work on them to get these people back to work. Because when you hear people, they say, I want to go to work. Well, I got this record. Well, I, got this, I have this problem. And that's how you build a city back right. Continue building the city up and up, build a pyramid, and these people continue want to come here. Companies will come here because they see you are trying to work on these problems. So I'm so glad them guys was here to talk about that. Miss Oldham gonna come up and talk about house, housing consortium, and uh, I had, we had an opportunity to spend uh, an hour together and talk about this. And this is one of the issues we have brought up that we need to look at. And this is another piece that we're trying to work on working on beautifying our city, taking our city to another level. Ms. Odom. Mr. Glenn, Mr. President, council members, thank you for the opportunity. Um, at a uh, council, uh, council committee meeting, I was asked to report back on the 14th on property maintenance, on what can be done to improve um, the activity to further improve the city. Um, I truly appreciate uh, uh, Mr. Prague, uh, Sprague and Mr. Arthur's comments about economic development and job development in Allen County because what was the number one barrier? It wasn't a lack of jobs. It even wasn't a lack of available education. It was the, the perception of the quality of housing and the quality of life in the city of Lima. I'm very proud of the work that the Department of Community Development has done um, to improve the quality of life, but it's time to look at a new set of tools. Um, I would like to meet again with the um, Community and Economic Development Committee to talk further about a need for additional tools, supply, and um, new ordinances, as well as update to ordinances to further <coughs> improvement of housing quality. But tonight I wanted to talk about one activity that involves 14 different agencies in Allen County to support the quality of life for the entire county. The Allen County, um, Lima Allen County Housing Consortium is a group of 14 different housing providers, meaning people involved such as realtors, bankers, um, public housing, LACA, all different types of agencies that are involved with providing housing assistance that meet on a regular basis to see what can be done to improve housing in Allen County. Over the last two years, um, there's been diligent work to try to determine what are the barriers and what can be done to work more closely together to improve housing quality. 
Over a period of time, a study was done with these agencies, and it was found that, first of all, over eight million, close to nine million dollars a year is spent in Allen County on housing assistance. The majority of that is spent, obviously, through um, public housing, but that also means assistance with rent, with utilities, with gas, also the cost of inspection for property maintenance violations, and other kinds of things to try to improve housing quality. The second thing that was found that among those 14 agencies, there are between six to eight different kinds of housing quality <coughs> codes that those agencies operate under. Even though the city of Lima obviously has a property maintenance code, in Allen County, beyond our barrier, or beyond our, our jurisdictional boundaries, they do not have a housing code. Additionally, even those agencies which operate with inside the city have their own policies on what they define as housing quality. Through a, through a series of meetings and focus groups, it was determined that there are there is a general agreement that there are nine basic standards that we believe that any agency um, and also any provider uh, or assistance in providing housing, such as a realtor or a landlord, should adhere to, adhere to when they are um, looking at housing, um, providing housing assistance. What I'm here tonight to do is to ask City Council to consider support of the Lima Allen County Housing Consortium Memorandum of Understanding where those 14 agencies will be joining together and signing a memo that says we will support these nine standardized ha um, <coughs> housing standards. We believe it's not only important for those agencies to sign a memorandum of, of understanding to cooperate with each other, but to get letters of support from business, from um, governmental entities, and others who really want to see an improvement of quality of life in Allen County, which can help improve our economy, period. They could simply uh, deal with that very first issue that Mr. Arthur and Mr. Sprague addressed. Um, I've given you tonight a copy of the Lima Allen County Housing Consortium Member of Understanding um, memo, um, basically the overview, a copy of the inspection sheet that we're going to be asking each of the agencies to use, an example of a draft um, agreement that those agencies will be entering into. So um, this will be finalized hopefully by the end of October by the consortium. And I'm just here to ask you, and the first of many things we need to do to improve housing quality is to support a um, resolution of support for the uh, memorandum of understanding. Thank you. Thank you. Is that the question that will go to the committee then? Is the recommendation on supporting that, Mr. Glenn? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We're going to make. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do I need to make a motion yes. that, that, that make Just a recommendation? Make a motion to refer the communication from Amy Odom to your committee. I'd like to make a motion to refer the communication from Amy Odom to Economic Development Committee. Second. The motion, the second, is to refer the uh, information provided by Amy Odom regarding the Housing Consortium. Memo of Understanding to the Community and Economic Development Committee. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion <coughs> carries. Okay. Now we'll set that meeting up when you get back from vacation. Okay. So we'll set that meeting up from there. And uh, second one, I have to go last one here. Uh, we want to look into Chestnut. We have no parking on each side. We have parking space on both sides. And a lot of people in the neighbor in the neighborhood there been complaining about it a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at it a little bit more before I make a motion to see what we need to do to put no parking on one side of the street. Uh, the neighborhood, they got kind of big now, and it's a lot of kids in the area now. So we got to look at, make some decision how we're going to go about which side, because both sides got driveways and garages. So it shouldn't be a problem putting no parking on one side so but I would like to go around and talk to the people first and see how they feel first about it but that recommendation will be coming up very soon uh, I know before winter time if we can get that uh, through the parking commission so I'm not gonna make no motion to send it there yet to get with the people in the community and the neighborhood association out there okay thank you all right thank you mr. Blood. Uh, the only thing I have this evening is, I think, hot off the press. Oh, Mr. Todd. <laughs> no, we forgot. How could I forget Commissioner Gordon? Gordon. <laughs> Mr. Gordon. Yeah. Um, well. Well, you're so quiet. I have. I have. 
two things. Um, the Fraternal Order of Police are going to have their annual pancake day on uh, Saturday, October 3rd at the FOP Hall from 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Rob Avenue, 750 Rob Avenue. Very important day. Um, oh, price, $7 uh, in advance for children, 12 and under, $4. So I'll be there eating pancakes that day. <laughs> and the second thing, uh, one of the most important things of all is to remind people to be good to each other. Mm -hmm. And that's it, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. And thanks for not being too rough on me for... <laughs> Mr. Glenn threw me off because he didn't go through 18 things. <laughs> uh, and you took the one item I was going to mention, and that was the FOP Pancake Day. So I've got nothing further. Mr. Tevin? Mr. President, I move that Lima City Council adjourn until 7 p.m. on September 28th in these chambers. Second. The motion and the second is that Lima City Council adjourn until September 28th at 7 p.m. in these chambers. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, we are adjourned. <laughs>